Welcome to this module. In the last module, what we have seen, we have seen how we can use uh, uh, different materials for 3D printing. We talked about uh, plastics, we talk about metals, right? And we see the advantage of each material uh, and where you can use uh, uh, and and, the, and you, you should use that material according to the particular application. For example, in the biocompatible material, what kind of material you have to use? You have to use titanium, right? Uh, if you are talking about uh, high temperature materials, if it is metal, you can use nickel alloy. So, uh, from I am hoping that from that earlier lecture you are able to understand what materials you can use for 3D printing. In this particular module, let us see what are the techniques involved in fabricating 3D components. Okay. So, uh, we'll, uh, it is a short module, but uh, it is very interesting according to what I understand. Uh, so, that um, uh, you, you will understand in detail uh, how different techniques can be used to uh, print the different materials using 3D printer. So, if you see the slide. Uh, what you see here is uh, there are different techniques. First one is FDM, then SLA, and finally SLS. We we'll go one by one. Uh, the first one, when we talk about fused deposition modeling, you can see that there is a filament, there is a heated nozzle, and then there is a building platform. Right? This building platform can move in z direction up and down, and this filament will move in x and v, x and y directions. So you can see here. Uh, this heated nozzle, uh, uh, the filament remains uh, uh, ed, ed stable. I am talking about the heated nozzle. The heated nozzle will move in x and y direction, and the, through this filament, the material is fed to the heated nozzle, and then it will be uh, 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 printed on the building platform. Uh, whenever you require a certain height, then this uh, building platform can move in z direction. Now. <coughs> this FTM which is fused deposition modeling is most widely available 3D printing process mainly used for low cost prototyping and design verification with very fast turn around times. You will see such a uh, FDM based uh, 3D printing process uh, as a part of your experiment uh, class uh, where you will be uh, taught how we can use the 3D printing material, how you can print a block, how can you print a uh, block from a remote place lot of things we will see in the experiment class. If you go to the next one which is your SLA which stands for stereolithography or you can say DLP which is digital light processing. In this particular process you have the liquid photopolymer resin which is uh, here and then you have a platform uh, then they were cured this, this elephant kind of things that you see here is a cured resin model. You have a, a recoder blade and then uh, from the uh, staging uh, you have a laser elevator scanning mirror and curing laser beam. So, uh, together using everything what, what we can do we can uh, we can use this system uh, for uh, uh, for the complete for, for, for designing the complete setup or printing the complete setup and the advantage of SLA is that it is most suitable for visual applications uh, where an injection mold like smooth surface finish and a high level of feature details are required. So, when you want to have an extremely smooth finish and the uh, it should look like an injection molded part SLA is better over over FDM. Uh, but if you could talk about SLS which is selective laser printing, uh, here the uh, uh, there are several components again including there is a heater, there is a uh, build chamber, this is a build chamber, here is a build chamber right and um, uh, these are the heater. So, it is a one is a heater, here also there is a heater, here also there is a heater right and then uh, you have a powder delivery system uh, uh, which is right over here. Right. Then you have a printed part which is right over here and then you have a recoder uh, which is this guy, uh, you have a laser beam right this one, you have a x y scanning mirror 7 and you have a laser which is number 8. So, it is a complex system. But the, uh, but the SLS is used for both prototyping and small batch production of functional plastic parts with good mechanical properties. But these are another technique uh, used for printing uh, different components.
So, uh, let us see these three videos and then you will understand in detail uh, how FDM is different than SLA is different than SLS. So, let me play the first video about FDM and then subsequent videos I will play. So, first video on FDM. In a word, it is a game changer. It can create parts and geometries that you cannot do in an injection molding. That is going to create a revolution in the near future and this technology be adopted as a major process uh, for manufacturing components. So, FDM stands for Fused Deposition Modeling. Uh, it is a fancy word for uh, laying down a small bead of plastic. What is really cool is you can have a real engineering grade thermal plastic. So, the same stuff you would injection mold. If someone needs an ABS or a polycarbonate. Uh, or a high temperature alt temp, we can actually print it directly as opposed to casting a part or having injected molded parts done. You are getting close to the same quality and in, in mechanical properties and aesthetics as you would an injection molded part, but you are getting it in an additive process. Our software takes a 3D data file and it slices it into layers. Then that creates a tool path that is sent to the machine. The raw material is produced into filament like fishing line type form. That filament is wrapped around a spool. So, that is your cartridge of raw material that is going to be used to build parts. That material then gets fed up through the machine all the way to the head where it is liquefied and extruded in fine layers. The support material is extruded at the same time and then layer by layer the part is growing. When the part is completed then, it is removed from the build platform and then the support material is removed. We also offer post finishing operations that can smooth out those layers. So, whether it is a hand finishing or cosmetic paint, we still can provide smooth looking parts. We developed the technology to, to fit a full breadth of geometry sets. We have seen it used anywhere from small prototypes for mock ups on test fitting parts to really large uh, you know, structural pieces that go on um, airplanes or UAVs. We have gone from that, we are just doing real easy concept models, you know, onesies, twosies to now we are doing production runs of 5,000, 10,000 parts that are, and it is the actual part coming from uh, the FDM technology. And so, with it uh, we can do uh, things that I have yet to even think of, but that younger generation, uh, they are going to take this uh, FDM process and turn it into something that is going to blow me away someday. Okay. Now, since you have seen this video, let me also play the second one which is the SLA printing. So, you understood the difference between SLA and FDM right. Now, also let us see how the SLS printing is different than uh, SLA or FDM. Let me play the video for SA, SLS uh, printing as well. Once the nylon powder is loaded in the supply container and digital instructions are programmed, the laser unit directs a high powered beam to a reflective mirror. From there, a Galvo motor system steers the focused beam to the powder surface. Each layer of part geometry is then sintered into a heated bed of nylon. Pistons move the supply container up and the build chamber down while a roller moves across the bed to distribute the next layer of powder. Excess powder is captured in a collection container. The process is repeated layer by layer until the build is complete. 
Need quality 3D printed parts? Get an instant quote today at Proto Labs. So you have seen right that there are uh, uh, different techniques to fabricate uh, that, that can be used for fabricating uh, uh, several shapes uh, using 3D printer. Uh, uh, let us see few more uh, we have a material jetting we have a DMLS and we have a binder jetting. So, in the material jetting process uh, the material jetting process produces part of highest dimension accuracy with very smooth surface finish used for both visual prototypes and tool manufacturing. Here you have a positional belt you have an optical feedback sensor which is a position sensor you have printed head uh, and then you have a blower. So, the printer head will move in x and y direction there is a heater which is on the bed and it will start uh, printing the material by uh, jetting it over the uh, heated bed or heated bed. Uh, while you compare DMLS which is direct metal laser sintering uh, or you can say SLM which is selective laser melting uh, in this particular process uh, uh, the material is melted with the help of a laser source and uh, the center part in the powder bed is right over here right uh, and there, there is a recoater arm with a metal powder supply is on one side and the powder dispenser system is also uh, on the on the, the left side of this particular schematic. The advantage of uh, DMLS or SLM uh, is that it can produce high performance and use metal 3D printed parts for industry applications including aerospace, automotive and medical. When you talk about uh, binder jetting you see here uh, that binder jetting is most commonly used for uh, full color parts, low cost metal printing and large sand casting molds. In this particular process uh, there is an elevator system, there is a build uh, uh, building platform and then the building material is uh, uh, supported and then it is fed to the uh, injection printing heads is similar to injection printer and then you have a UV curing lamp once you print it there is a UV will cure the material to get the final part uh, and of course there is a leveling head just to level up the uh, printed part. Uh, so, so binder, jet, uh, binder uh, jetting uh, is mostly used when you want to make a colorful or a colorful parts where there are more than one uh, color involved. Uh, so, let us see now in detail the videos of material jetting, DMLS and binder jetting. I will play one by one. Polyjet is a 3D printing method that makes beautiful precise models in a huge variety of materials and colors. It works like an inkjet printer, but instead of jetting drops of ink, polyjet 3D printers jet tiny droplets of liquid plastic. A UV light instantly cures the plastic, solidifying it. And so, layer by layer, complex models take shape. The most advanced polyjet systems can build multi-material parts, soft, rigid, clear, and colorful. You can even adjust material properties like heat resistance and durability. The same technology that makes gorgeous prototypes also makes precise manufacturing tools. Designers can predict future needs and serve them now. Manufacturers deliver better products faster and with less waste. Researchers have new methods of saving lives. Polyjet is reshaping industries like film, fashion, and medicine. It's helping people with great ideas improve the future. What's next? So, now you have seen how the material jetting works right. So, let me play uh, how the DMLS or SLM laser jetting uh, works I will play it here. Direct metal laser sintering also known as DMLS is an additive manufacturing technology that creates metal parts directly from 3D CAD data without the need for tooling. DMLS utilizes a variety of metal and alloy materials such as stainless steel, cobalt chrome, and Inconel to create strong, durable parts and prototypes. DMLS is an excellent choice for functional metal prototypes, high temperature applications, and end use parts. The DMLS process begins in the same fashion as other layer additive manufacturing technologies. A program takes 3D CAD data and mathematically slices it into 2D cross sections. Each of these sections will act as a blueprint telling the DMLS machine exactly where to center the metal material. The data is then transferred to the DMLS equipment. A recoder 
assembly pushes powdered metal material from the powder supply to create a uniform layer over the base plate. A laser then draws a 2D cross section on the surface of the build material, heating and fusing the material. Once a single layer is complete, the base plate is lowered just enough to make room for the next layer. More material is raised from the cartridge and recoated evenly on the previously sintered layer. The DMLS machine continues to sinter layer upon layer, building from the bottom up. As the part is built, support structures are added to give supplemental strength to fine features and overhanging surfaces. The completed part is then removed from the base plate and treated with an age-hardening heat process to further harden the part. Any support structures are also removed at this time. With numerous surface treatment and hand polishing options available through service providers, DMLS parts can be used in highly cosmetic applications. Typical uses for DMLS include tools and manufacturing aids, small integrated structures, dental components, surgical implants, and aerospace parts. Okay, so now you have also seen how DMLS uh, or SLM uh, uh, laser uh, sintering works. Let me play now binder jetting. Binder jetting, additive manufacturing, is a process inspired by the technology of inkjet printers. In this process, a liquid binder is selectively deposited on a powder bed with a print head. It is a growing process that allows the production of parts for the manufacturing, medical, and dental industries. This technique enables the production of metallic and ceramic parts, as well as sand molds for castings. To start the process, a 3D drawing is imported into the printer software. The powder to be used is placed in a dispenser, which ensures a constant supply during printing. First, a powder layer of a specific thickness is spread. Thereafter, the printing head, moving on two axes, projects the binder where is necessary. Before moving on to the next layer, the solvent contained in the binder is evaporated by an incandescent lamp. The powder bed is then lowered and a new powder layer is deposited. Therefore, the production takes place in a series of steps that build the part layer by layer. When the cycle is completed, the binder is cured by placing the container in a furnace. The temperature and time depend on the type of binder employed during printing. After this step, unbound particles are removed to reveal the part or the mold. After this step, the sand molds are ready to be used in foundries. The metal and ceramic parts must undergo sintering, infiltration, heat treatment or hot isostatic pressing before being used. Okay, so now what you see here is that we can have different uh, techniques to fabricate uh, uh, that, that are involved in the fabrication of 3D component, right. Uh, in, the, in the next class, what we will see is how can we have uh, different kind of sensors printed using 3D printing. Uh, so, for this is the end of this particular module and uh, I hope that you know you, you go through the videos, you understand the technique. Uh, the, the idea here is to help you out to uh, look at different techniques available and uh, then uh, based on those techniques, uh, how can we use, uh, how can we use either the material or the combination of material with a particular technique for, for fabricating a particular uh, uh, module and that module can be used. There can be, when I am saying module, it can be also a uh, uh, implant, right? It can be also something which can be used in aerospace component. It may be used in medical devices. It can be used in um, uh, electronics packaging. So, uh, depending on what kind of application that you want to work on, you have to select the combination of a material and with uh, and 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 accordingly the technique that can be used for uh, 3D printing. Uh, so, uh, uh, the next class I will tell you how you can use 3D printer uh, for sensors 
and how can you package those sensors using 3D printing. Hey, till then you take care, I will see you in the next class. If you have any questions, please ask me in a forum, right, uh, either me or my TA would really will be, uh, uh, you know, uh, we are working really hard to, to uh, attend all the questions that you ask and uh, uh, wherever possible, uh, we are trying to answer all the questions, uh, you know, that uh, you generally put over the forum. Uh, in case you still have a detailed question where you think that a forum it may not be right place to ask, you are you can feel free to ask me through my email ID. Uh, you can send an email to my uh, to me uh, addressing. Uh, 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 please put the uh, information about the course uh, and then uh, ask me a question. Make sure that it is not a, uh, it is something that you cannot get it uh, as an answer in a forum. If you get the answers through forum, you do not have to send me a separate uh, request, but if you do not get an answer through forum and you think that you are really uh, confused, then please feel free to send me an email. I will try to answer your query as soon as I can, right. So, look at this, I will see you next class. Until then, you take care. Bye.